And our feature segment today, a one-of-a-kind college experience for agricultural students. Since 1938, senior students at Iowa State University have run the school's farm. They make the plans and provide the labor needed to grow 1,400 acres of row crops and 3,500 head of hogs. The Ag 450 class was in charge of a $750,000 budget in 2013. Market to Market's David Miller reports the class delivers real-world experience in decision-making and problem-solving. It's been a typical fall at the William Murray Farm near Ames, Iowa. The harvest is bountiful. Grain is being hauled to the homestead for on-farm storage or delivery to nearby elevators. And hogs are being checked before they are sent to the local packing plant. On closer examination, however, you will discover this isn't the William Murray Farm, but a working classroom. And the diversified grain and livestock operation is overseen by 54 Iowa State University students. It's not just another class where, you know, tell me what you want me to know, I'll regurgitate it back on a test, I'll get my A, B, or whatever it is, and we'll move on. They, they actually get excited about what they're learning, and uh, I think that's really what it's all about. Because you're showing less nitrogen use on the home place, yes. right? Dr. Tom Paulson is part of a long line of professors who have acted as guides to the hands-on educational experience over the past 70 years. William Murray founded the class. It was his brainchild that came to fruition in the winter of 1943. Murray's idea was to give agriculture students experience in managing a working farm before they returned home to family operations or entered other agricultural professions. We see this growth on a week-by-week -week basis. It goes from walking in uh, starry-eyed, saying this is going to be easy, to saying, whoa, there's a whole lot more to this, and, and being frustrated with the amount of information and, and trying to discover what it is they really need to do, because we don't tell them everything they have to do. That's part. They have to decide. To work on this farm, the only one of its kind at a land-grant university, you must take a course offered by the College of Agriculture and Life Sciences called Agricultural Education and Studies 450, more commonly known as Ag 450. A major portion of what happens here is determined by the students. And to get approval for any project, a student must convince a majority of the 53 other class members. Contracted 10,000 bushels of corn. Ag 450 provides an opportunity for students to explore ideas and concepts in a real-world environment. Many students operate complex farm machinery for the first time, while others gain practical experience with projects deemed too expensive to experiment with on their family's operations. Most of the students are enrolled in the College of Agriculture, but only 30 to 50 percent will return to family farms. Josh Favor will return to work on his parents' farm after graduation. And I wanted to take it to try to learn new things, um, some technology, some new equipment that I might not otherwise have a chance to run new ideas. And then that way, when I go back to the farm, I can contribute some experiences and ideas. There are a lot of people who do stuff in life for the money. I'm going to farm just because I love it. Class president Emily Ryherd plans to have a career working on her family's farm. Okay. It's the farm management part of this class really brings it all together, um, all those little aspects that um, we have to take courses on, it brings it all together in one course. Um, I can relate it back to my home farm and also just really any job in the industry. Students also receive guidance from Dustin Perry, a PhD student, and Greg Vogel, who helps implement the students' directives. You have to be able in this, in this job to allow the students to experience success and experience failure. And what I have found is they learn best from failure. I know I did. Vogel, who spent 15 years in agricultural businesses after college, received his master's degree from Iowa State in the early 90s and has held the title of farm operator ever since. Okay, we'll go ahead and call the meeting to order and have Sam. One day per week is spent on campus discussing and voting on various farm project proposals. The class is split into eight committees covering everything from crops to machinery to public relations. 
Each group is responsible for keeping the farm operating properly. The student farm managers also are required to spend one day per week at the Ag 450 farm located just south of campus. Because the on-farm classroom only holds 35 students, the class is split roughly in half. And students quickly discover one of the biggest hurdles to passing the course is finding ways to communicate effectively between the two sections. Everyone helps to keep projects on track by finding a delicate balance of personal meetings, email, phone calls, and handwritten notes. The ultimate goal of every Ag 450 class is to make the farm profitable three out of every five years. Utilizing a budget of nearly three quarters of a million dollars, this semester's class begins where last semester's finished. In the spring of 2013, 596 acres of corn and soybeans were planted on a combination of Ag 450 ground and other land owned by Iowa State University. An additional 800 acres were custom farmed for other university departments. And 3,500 head of hogs were finished on contract for a private Iowa company. As the semester drew to a close, 32,000 of the 45,000 bushels of corn harvested were sold to local elevators at an average price of $4.81 per bushel. And all of the 5,174 bushels of soybeans were sold at an average price of $12.60 per bushel. According to early projections, the 2013 corn crop was 30% smaller than expected, but the students making predictions in the fall of 2012 couldn't have predicted a second year of drought in Iowa and a decline of nearly $3 in price. But favorable oilseed production and prices may have cushioned the blow. The soybean crop was 8% larger than expected and sold for 60 cents higher per bushel than projected in October of 2012. The final accounting will be handled by those enrolled in the spring class of 2014. Spearheading the plan for 2014 planting intentions was Sammy Bissell of the Crops Committee. Her proposal for taking advantage of seed varieties with a higher yield potential was adopted by the six other members of the committee. Factored into their proposal were more expensive seed and the loss of 100 acres of rented land. Also on Bissell's mind was the thought of losing money. In 2010, the farm was a few bushels of corn short due to weather and yield estimates, and students from that class were forced to negotiate with the local grain elevator to satisfy the contract. Most of the time, when you have 54 mines, uh, they come to a pretty good decision because they self-check. But sometimes we have to step back and say, you know, why do you want to do that? How come? How much? So this is asking for 56 tons of lime so on 110 acres? But if we give them a situation where they can come to that decision on their own, um, that's a lot better for them. And it's, it's a little harder for us, but I think it's well worth it uh, at the end of the day. Okay, that one After satisfying more. Paulson's concerns, Bissell brought the so, proposal to the class um, for a vote. Together, the whole crops committee put together our enterprise budgets. So with everything, all of our expenses, all of our inputs, it, we're going to make $78,828 for everything. Assuming we have everything paid for and that has the drying cost of all corn included in there and stored, um, that has no discounts on our seed that we're, planning, that we're potentially purchasing. Your uh, returns are projected off of bushels times the price, right? In here? Yes. What do you use for prices? The corn was like 420 and our beans were straight 11. The motion restated was that we would move forward with the proposed. And um, could I get a show of hands, those in favor? Okay, that's majority, thank you. Motion passes. Thank you, guys. The entire presentation and vote took less than five minutes to complete. For Paulson, those are the moments he lives for. In this course, there's a certain time where they start to get it, but they don't necessarily get all of it um, right away. But they realize real quickly that this is not their home farming operation. 
This is not another Iowa State University research farm. It's not another farm that maybe they worked at when they were growing up. And once they get that, they see that, and, and the aha moment happens, uh, they start to make decisions that are based upon what's really here and not what somebody else wants them to make decisions about. Next semester, another class will take over the operation with hopes of making it profitable and keep William Murray's dream alive. For Market to Market, I'm David Miller. And you can watch the story on Iowa State student farmers on our Farm Week website. That's farmweek.msucares.com. You can also watch Farm Week stories on our Farm Week USA Facebook page and YouTube. We'll have a link to the Market to Market website where you can see the original story as well as read the script. We're also available at twitter.com slash farmweek.